And here come the Eagles. Out high, Ivy looks to distribute. BC not a good three-point shooting team. In fact, they're at the bottom of the ACC, just 28% beyond the arc. They'll inbound here with 10 on the shot clock. Great job there by Ruby Whitehorn deflecting that pass and uh, putting them on the short shot clock here. Inbound coming from Daly, who gets it back. Goes past Elmore and pulls up. And the rebound deflected, knocking it down. Tiana Todd. On those in double figures, nearly 12 a game. Clemson coming in, averaging about 72 points a contest. Robinson, quick pass, stolen. Coming away with it, Ivy. She looked up court, she'll bring it up the floor herself. In transition, Taya Sidberry, the Utah transfer. Ontavia Wagner, and she lost it. Ahead it goes, Whitehorn from Harris. Nice move by Ruby Whitehorn to very, get it up. Very nice step through, Pete. I'm sorry I jumped on you there, but uh, very nice step through right there by Ruby and assist by Day Harris. Ivy in the corner this time, Sid Berry. It's an air ball, and coming up with it is Whitehorn. Whitehorn blowing past Ivy, can't finish. Battle for the rebound, and a foul will be called. Jim, your keys to the game, and it includes a magic number of 70. Yeah. Clemson, if they hold a team to 69 points or less, they win. If they give up more than 70 points, they usually lose. So uh, that, that's going to be a key for Clemson there. Limit their turnovers, and we got to make some threes. Got to make some threes tonight. And again, Eagles team that can score some points but not necessarily from long range winning the battle for the ball inside is Wagner now on the wing on the drive and on the finish Andrea Daly their leading scorer 15 points a game junior out of Miami Well, Daly just hit that guard forward gap there in the 2-3 zone took a straight line to the basket and nobody picked her up Whitehorn Elmore quick move down the lane Robinson, offensive rebound, and out of bounds, it'll go back over to BC. Oh my, awful lot of contact down there, look like. Joanna Burnaby McNamee, sixth season, guiding the Eagles team. And a prior stop at Albany, just down I-90 from Beantown. A couple of 20-win seasons to her credit, going for a milestone win, if you will, tonight, trying for her 90th at the helm of the Eagles. Miss inside, deflected Sidberry, count it, and she'll go to the line. That's the uh, fourth second chance point there. Simpson has got to box out. Sometimes it's more difficult to do on that 2-3 zone. You still got to block out people, but you're blocking out people in your area. And uh, Clemson did not put a body on anybody there. Tia Sidberry from Salt Lake City, 77%, second best on their team from the line, and a quick five-point lead for BC, which is trying to win a third game in a row in this building. Out front, Whitehorn. Tigers need more of that from her, just 27% beyond the arc. I don't think they're going to pass up any three-pointers tonight. I think that's a point of emphasis by the coaching staff. Austin College, a team that likes to try to play with a decent tempo. Quick pass, Ivy on the receiving end that time. And Inno Inyang just into the contest with the rebound. That's a good job using that big body there by Inno. Harris on the right wing. Whitehorn, couple of threes. She's been doing the damage so far for the Tigers. She has all eight points and their first lead. Daly pulls up using the window. She can score. Andrea Daly at nine points in the BC loss at home against Clemson a year ago. Own matchup this season for the Tigers against the ACC's New England representative. Under six to go in our opening quarter. Each team trading shots and scores on either end. Well, if Ruby Whitehorn can continue to build on the long-range game, it's going to be a good night for Clemson. 
No doubt about it. There's the assist from DeHass. Ruby got those feet set. Wonderful form on that jump shot. Jay Harris long ago surpassed her single season high water mark for assists, the pit transfer for Clemson. She'll inbound. She played two games against BC last year, combined for 26 points. Gives it to Whitehorn, defended out high by Ivy. See the shot clock coming up on five. Kramer, defended by Daly, has to force and gets it. Work for bucket that, of the night. Work for that jump shot off the pivot there. Great patience till she got the defender out of position and then drilled it. Mackenzie Kramer, she's entered the starting lineup in recent weeks, making a contribution. 17 points in the win against Wake Forest. Tigers get it back, looking to build on the one point advantage. Kramer out front, that's her specialty. Four of seven beyond the arc Sunday, and a good start on a Thursday night. I can promise you she's going to be a factor in this game now. They're going to take away that three, but as long as she puts the ball on the floor of that one dribble and a quick jumper, she's going to be fine. And Inyang creating the turnover. Whitehorn comes away with it. Move behind the back. Defense collapsing on her. Naya Valentine just into the contest will run the point for Clemson. She's seen her role increase during ACC play. It'll be a held ball, and the arrow will give it back over to the Boston College Eagles. Mackenzie Kramer, second best from beyond the arc for this Clemson team, 36%, loads up and makes early on. Greatness is a feeling, a moment. A same t-shirt, and we'll dig into that as our contest goes on. Both teams off to a good start. BC four of eight from the field. Clemson five of eight so far. They've swapped leads here in the opening quarter. You know, we talk about the head coaches, Pete, but we need to give the their assistant coaches a lot of credit too because it don't happen without them. Ja'Kayla Thompson just into the game, almost turned it over. Now she does. Harris stepping in, coming away with a steal. BC gives it up for a fourth time. Monty Freeman just checked into the contest out there with Inyang. And Harris will restore order. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Bullet inside. Inyang rolls off. Got her own rebound. And the scramble coming away with it. Ivy in BC in the front court. Lacey. Daly inside. Forced it down low. And it'll stay in the BC end. Clemson playing those passing lanes pretty well. They've got a lot of deflections there. Fingers on the ball, creating some loose balls. That time it went off in Yang out of bounds. Thompson on the floor. Actually running the point in place of Ivy. Eagles about 73 points a game. And on the feed inside, a whistle and a foul will be called. That's her second. Well, Amari Robinson, who had 12 points and seven boards in the game last year, will have a seat with that second personal foul. Third on the Tigers here in the opening quarter of play. BC has been yet to be whistled for a foul. Their head coach, Joanna Burnaby McNamee, wants them to, to be a little bit more aggressive, play with a little more aggression in games. Loading up, knocking it down, JoJo Lacey. Had been away from the team recently. Other end, the speed of Day Harris and the answer. She does have that explosive speed too, Pete, and that was, uh, oh, offensive foul, good call. Contact out high and the first personal foul in the game against Boston College as Harris hit the deck. It'll go against Andrea Daly. Once again, Clemson doing a good job jumping those passing lanes there. Day has cut the floor right there, and uh, Daly just simply could not stop. And take it away. Lacey making her presence felt since she entered. Contact in the lane, offensive foul the call. Once again, taking the charge. <laughs> Harris, she's all over the place, and you'll offer see her scrambling in a lot of different directions. Yeah, that's one of those intangibles we talked about early on, Pete, in the open, but uh, 
Biggest play you can make for your basketball team. Not only do you get gain possession of the ball, but you get a foul on the opponent. First on Lacey, three to go in the opening quarter. Kramer tries for another three. And the rebound battle won by Sidbury, who leads them with nearly seven a game. Front court quickly, Lacey. And Freeman coming down with it for Clemson. That's a good rebound right there in traffic now. That's what I like to see. Tigers barely out-rebound their opponents. BC at a rebounding deficit. Tigers with the turnover. Each team has had its fair share, and that'll be another on Boston College, give them six. We talked about these teams uh, being very comparable. Uh, that's one area you wish you didn't uh, uh, be on par with Boston College there. We got to take care of the basketball, Pete. That's uh, cannot beat yourself in this game. You give them extra possessions, you give them offensive rebounds and extra possessions. Those are the things that uh, that you got to stop. Tigers average about 17 turnovers a game. They're trying to be efficient here. BC forcing about 22 a game. Whitehorn almost lost it. She's already in double figures. 10 points for the Tigers sophomore from Detroit. That's a good call coming out of the timeout there. Running that screen on the backside. Thompson giving it away. Now getting it back. She'll work around a screen from Kayla Lazama. Thompson in the lane. Freeman. Contact. And the foul will be called. Nene Enjai, a freshman out of Senegal, just checked in. That's her first personal foul. Now three on the Eagles team. Oh, I like the way Amani Freeman's coming out in this game and getting a nose for that basketball. She's going after that rebound. I like it. Tigers trying to build on this largest lead so far. Clemson trying to get that third ACC win and a 10th overall in the season. Harris goes up and gets it underneath Inyang. Couldn't finish it. Oh, got to finish it. Coming down to the Eagles, Dontavia Wagner in the front court. Thompson, the pull up. Jaquela Thompson, a freshman. She's been one of impact so far this season. And off the bench with the field goal, makes it a four point game. Dangerous pass to Whitehorn. Elmore out high, looked low, and said she travels. And a fifth turnover in the opening quarter for Clemson. Thompson trying to become an effective scorer early on in her BC career. Got to stop the ball much further out than that. You can't ever get inside the free throw line before you check the ball handler. Drive inside, Enjai underneath. Wagner couldn't get it to go. Harris wanted to push the pace, didn't have numbers. Now she accelerates and she'll go to the line. Didn't particularly like that. It was one on three when she took the ball in there, but they bailed her out with a foul shot there. A little bit more under control. Good crossover step on Andrea Daly. Thompson called for her first personal. Free throws are important here in this basketball game, I can assure you. Harris, 67% of the season, we told you. 26 points combined in two games against BC a year ago when she played at Pitt. 13 in each, so she balanced it out. You know, she can score. She had back-to-back 25-point -back games against two of the better teams in this league. It's Louisville and Virginia Tech. One of the Tigers' 1,000-point scorers, but the score remains 17-13. Travel will be the call. Kayla Lozama, sophomore from right there in Boston, dragging her foot. Seven in the opening quarter. On the turnovers for the Eagles. See the differential. About seven seconds or so. Game clock to shot clock. Kramer, the Lehigh transfer, got to Clemson this year. Solid ball handler has been able to play some point guard. Known for her shooting. Tigers working at play. Elmore with 10 on the shot clock. Whitehorn. 
And we get a whistle away from the ball. A foul will be called against the Eagles. Dontavia Wagner. That's the fifth foul, so that would be uh, two shots. Wagner picking up her first, but five in the quarter. And Owen Yang, 73% from the line for the junior out of St. Cloud, Florida. And the lead is back to five. And Owen Yang has a nice shooting touch right there. She can shoot that uh, 15, 18 foot jump shot. She had nine against BC a year ago. Gets into the scoring column with a couple of free throws. 10 seconds to play in the quarter. BC tries to cut into the six point deficit. Again, they're not a great three point shooting team, but Lozamba will try one from afar and inside a foul on the rebound try. Gonna go against Clemson. Maddie Ott, her first personal. A lot of times you can pin in just like you can box out. You can pin in, and she pushed her when she pinned her in there that time. But they're not on the bonus, so it obviously it's not a foul that hurts them. Ivy gets it in. Todd. And that's how the opening quarter comes to an end. We told you they're evenly matched teams. Tigers jump out to a six-point advantage after really creative Amani uh, Freeman. She's a food, nutrition, and culinary science major, but again, uh, her creativity extends to t-shirt design as we see tonight. Elmore underneath for Freeman. Oh, how timely that is. Good high-low. Nice pass from the corner by McKenzie Kramer. First bucket of the night for the Miami of Ohio transfer. Tigers have their biggest lead so far at eight. BC kind of goes through lulls, and we've seen that out of Clemson this year. Njai missing. They've had some bad misses, several shots that have not caught the rim. For a team that comes in shooting 43%. On the other end, the Tigers able to answer Michaela Elmore. She's shown some long range game of late. Well, that's the difference in the game. Uh, Clemson's four for five from three land now, and BC's 0 for two. 11 point lead. BC trying to snap a three game skid. Keep in mind, two of those losses against good teams to say the least in Louisville and NC State and Georgia Tech is very good and that was on the road across the lane Todd much needed basket by Tiana Todd sophomore from Ontario in Canada bullet underneath Whitehorn and one I like Mackenzie Kramer she sees the floor very very well a dozen for Ruby Whitehorn and as you said Mackenzie Kramer Really good court vision. Coming down the floor there, good court vision. She doesn't have the speed and quickness of Day has, but I like her at the point guard because she's so much under control. 77% from the line this season. The Tigers just two of five so far in free throws. Eagles trying to push the pace. Ivy dishing, now gets it back. Todd, 35%, one of their better three-point shooters. Instead, down low it goes. So Barry can't get the roll. Harris, near midcourt, knocked away by a BC team that's top 10 in the nation in steals, more than 12 a game. Sid Barry, the step through. And Kramer runs it down. Got to be careful with the ball around these Eagles. No doubt about it. They got quick hands for sure. Harris out high, Elmore knocked away again. Tigers giving it up for a seventh time in this opening half. Todd in transition. Rebound deflected to Harris. Whitehorn, she'll drive and feed Elmore. Rather, Freeman will head of the line. Right. I believe Clemson wants to push that basketball as they did right there. Good look by Ruby Whitehorn. Amani Freeman almost had another field goal. She'll go to the line. We're on the season. She's 74%. You know, receiving the basketball is important as well. You need to become a good receiver. Protect that passing lane with your body. She can't get the roll either. Freeman was a scorer for the Red Hawks in the MAC, her prior school. Season ago, 12 double-digit scoring games for Miami of Ohio. 
came into the night averaging just under four points a game. The player who, as she gets even more comfortable in the system, you would suppose can be more of a factor. Amani Robinson with Whitehorn getting the offensive rebound in some early foul trouble, so extended minutes for the likes of Freeman and Owinyang, who's waiting to check back in. Elmore gives to Kramer. Shot clock at five. Kramer. Called a long two. Another good start for Mackenzie Kramer, Minnesota native. Eight yep. points. I uh, I like the ball in her hands with the shot clock running down. Fabulous collegiate career scoring for Kramer. BC trying to get something going offensively. Wagner tried to feed low to Sidbury. And another turnover for the Eagles. That's their eighth. Take another look at the jumper by Mackenzie Kramer. Foot was right on the line. Definitely on the line, yeah. So they called it a two-pointer instead. Tigers look to build on this largest lead of the game. They build a larger lead than the 14 they had moments ago, up by 13. Kramer from the elbow, kind of got out of sorts as she released it. A little off balance on that one. Todd pushes the pace and drives. Talk about off balance, what a finish by Tiana Todd from Vaughn, Ontario. Rule number one on defense, stop the basketball. Ivy defending Kramer gets the screen. It's a mismatch, they switched on Kramer. Harris over Todd. And a foul on the rebound try. Yet contact underneath, JoJo Lacey was trying to box out Eno Inyang. Boy, look at the quick move to the basket by Todd. Yep, Eno Inyang's still running down the floor. She don't see the basketball. Inyang just picked up her first personal foul in the quarter. It's the first in the Tigers. Two so far in BC. Eagles have yet to hit a three. And they're shooting 38% from the field. And a turnover once more. That'll be their ninth. Good job of Clemson defensively right there with the trap on the baseline by Inyang and uh, Day Harris. DC came in giving it up about 17 times a game. Robinson told you about the two early fouls. She'll check back in. She's got to play smart here for five and a half minutes. Tigers with scorers on the floor right now. Harris off the spin. Robinson try for the rebound, go out of bounds, Step over out. to the Eagles. Once again, forced a shot there. Plenty of time on the shot clock, too quick. And look at that, Amari Robinson was put in simply for offensive purposes, so out she goes, and Michaela Elmore back on the court. You don't see offensive, defensive substitutions this early in the game normally, but I like it. Lob down low for Sidbury. Nice touch, couldn't get the roll, but she'll head back to the line. What a good addition she's been this year. They lost a post player to North Carolina and a point guard to Duke from last year's team. They brought in some reinforcements. She's been their best. Yep. And the post player from North Carolina was a big, nice player. And uh, that's a great job right there. She's quick off her feet, Pete. You see her come off that bounce and off that dribble and bounce up in the air and has the ball shot before the defender knows what's happening. Greatest girls basketball scorer in Utah high school history. Over 2,500 points in her prep career in the Salt Lake City area. You don't it's a nine-point game. You don't set those kind of scoring records without being a good free-throw shooter, that's for sure. BC sees Elmore get it on the elbow. And the rebound. Coming down to the point guard, Ivy. On the wing to Wagner. Whistle and a foul be called. Ruby Whitehorn, first personal on the sophomore, is off to a great night scoring wise with 12. That little arm bar right there. You girl puts the ball on the floor. You cannot put that arm bar on her. 
Tigers have led by nearly 15 in this game. Lacey, though, cuts the deficit. Back down to seven. And a foul on the other end. You know, that was a good job by Ruby Whitehorn right there. She could have gone on in and forced the action, tried to commit a foul there, but she pulled up for the jump shot. Very nicely. BC has a made three on the night. JoJo Lacey in a seven-point game. You know what that decision to pull up, go straight up for the jump shot, and the girl got her on the arm. And uh, she, Ruby's off to a really good start. And uh, uh, let's hope she can knock these two free throws down and continue. And so are the Tigers, 52.4% from the field for the Clemson team in this opening half. And Whitehorn, so good at all that she does, 77% from the line. Tigers, though, just three of eight as a team on free throws so far. Yeah, you know, Inyang was two for two, and everybody else was. And Harris quickly gets the rebound. Well, what speed she's got. She's explosive. Now, let's see what we got. The horn set. Whitehorn looking low, and then going for the steal, Lacey commits the personal foul. That'll be... Number three, on JoJo Lacey. And the fourth foul on BC here. So one shy of putting the Tigers in the bonus for the rest of the quarter. Lacey's given them a boost off the bench. A senior from Douglasville, Pennsylvania, hadn't been available to them in recent games. Freeman. Harris from way out. And Sidbury coming down with it. Ivy try to get it down low, knocked away from Wagner, the intended target. Good hands by Michaela Elmore right there. Right. Bounce pass would might have gotten through there. You're right. Kramer and the Tigers trying to deny. Daly out on the wing, Todd. Bullet pass underneath Wagner. Good ball movement. By the Eagles. First time we've really seen them work the ball that way. Exactly. And that was a good job flashing to the basketball there as well. Make it yourself available. I just try to tell my players, you got to make yourself available. Same deficit that they began this second quarter with. They're back within six. Whitehorn, 13 points so far. Kramer's done damage as well. She has seven. And the ball taken away. Ivy ahead. Sidbury by herself. Taya Sidbury. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Seven in the game for the Salt Lake City native. BC back within four. Under three and a half to go in the quarter. And look at the foul called. Tiana Todd. So the ball movement for BC, some pretty stuff. No doubt they'll try to go back to that. Yep, no question. Kayla Elmore's got to drop quicker. I always like the front to post. Keep it out of there. I think basketball games are won and lost on the block. And on the free throw line, and if you can't get it to the block, you don't get to the free throw line that often. Todd's first personal foul. Harris knocking down the free throw. Simpson will be on the two-shot bonus the rest of this quarter. 15 foul on BC. One out of two. If they don't shoot free throws better than they're shooting it, it won't make much difference, will it? Tigers has a team. Four for 11 from the line. Daly with Harris hitting the floor. Foul is called. I'm not sure it was. <laughs> was it on the ball or was it away from the ball? Actually, Sidbury with the illegal screen because she tripped Day Harris. I thought, sure, they can't call that foul on Day Harris. I see. I did not see the trip, but that's a good call because it, it was definitely there. First on Sidbury. Five-point game coming up on three to go before the half. Looks like BC's working that zone. Robinson back on the floor. They try to get her in there on the offensive end despite two early fouls. Kramer, now Harris. Lob inside for Robinson, knocked away nicely by Wagner. 
Second in the ACC in steals. A bullet from Ivy. Inside a daily. Three-point game. Eagles have a nice run going, and they're five of their last five from the field. That's eight points off turnover for Boston College. Tigers without a field goal in more than five minutes. Harris trying to change that, and the rebound coming down to Daly. She'll push the pace. Chance to get within one or maybe tie. Ivy inside. Sid Berry the turn. And pulling her way in to get the offensive glass. Andrea Daly, and she'll head back to the line. How about the no look? Another assist for Ivy. She's had some mega games this year in that category, Jim. Yeah, she has had uh, at least four games where she's had 10 or more assists. That's outstanding, Pete. I don't care uh, what league you're playing in or in the game of basketball, 10 assists is a benchmark. They missed her a year ago. She was out for the season with a torn ACL and really still kind of working her way back in, as you would expect, coming back from that kind of injury. On the free throw line, Tavia Wagner, 59% this year. As a team, they're 67%. That's been one of the reasons they've lost some close games. Their folks will tell us there are five games against some major opponents they feel like they should have had in the win column. It'd be a much different look overall for them. Coming in at 11-11, and ACC-wise, they're 3-6. and six. That's just the beginning of the night, 2-7 and seven in Atlantic Coast Conference play, as you see on the graphic. That's this thing back to two. Off the handoff from Robinson, Harris out high, Nia Valentine underneath Robinson. Got behind the defender, Wagner. That was a really nice feed by Nia Valentine. Away from the defender, good job by Amari getting that basketball. And, and Valentine a... taking it away. Try to get it cross court to Robinson. And Linda Miles, the official closest to the ball, says it was last touch by the Tiger. Graduate student. Yeah, Mari disagrees, but uh, she don't get a vote in this case. <laughs> Under two to go. Eagles get it back down four. Eagles trying to win for a 14th time in 21 meetings in the series. And let's see what the stop is about. Not sure if it has something to do with the clock issue. I don't believe they started the shot clock. So they started the game clock without the player touching the ball. Okay. They're trying to let it roll out, so things are back in order. I'll be looking things over. Wagner inside, try to fire it to Todd. Off the scramble, held ball, and the arrow keeps it in the BCN. Mari Robinson, early foul trouble, able to get into the scoring column for the first time tonight. We talked about the receiver protecting that passing lane. That was a prime example right there of how Mari used her body to protect that passing lane. Michaela Elmore checks back in. Elmore, second best on the team with nearly seven rebounds a game. Again, Tigers not necessarily one of the taller teams in the conference, but BC surely is not. And and the Butler trying to take advantage of opportunities to go big. Further discussion about the clock this time, the shot clock, which shows 28, but we're told they're going to reset it to 26. This is going to sound corny, Pete, but it's not Actually, the size 24. of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. So I've seen smaller teams that are really good rebounding teams. A little too anxious, Tiana Todd, sophomore turning it over. That's a nice player, though. For a sophomore, she's got uh, she's got her better days ahead of her, I believe. Eagles a dozen turnovers. Came in at 15 and a half a game. Robinson back on the floor as the Tigers have the ball with about a minute and a half to go before the break. Robinson defended by Wagner, the best that BC has. Kramer around a screen from Freeman. Sid Berry on her, might have gotten a hand on it, and Ivy going for the ball, knocks it out. Whoa. Sid Berry, 17 blocks on the year. Utah transfer. 
course, they didn't reset the shot clock, so it's at five. Freeman from Valentine, and a travel. 11 turnovers so far for Clemson. Well, this is the kind of game that we said her team <laughs> and Amanda Butler's team are pretty evenly matched, and other than Clemson sprinting out to a 13-point lead earlier this quarter, pretty much has played with each team having a little bit of flow at times, kind of forcing their own negative action. Yeah. It's a game of runs, and sometimes it's not necessarily good runs. Amanda Butler says the Tigers, when they've gone into a valley, just have not done a good job of coming out of them. Lozama, shot clock under 10. Ivy looks one way, fires off the glass. Kayla Ivy with the bucket, her first of the contest. You know, we talked about Ivy's uh, ability to get the ball in the right people's hands. Her assist turnover ratio is exceptional, but she scores about five points a game, and there was two right there. You see the difference in the clocks in a two-point game. Mattiot, Elmore, quick pass inside. Freeman, nice finish. Really good. Great job screening away. The screener's the most open player the, in the game. She comes back to high post, and then there's a the high-low pass. Freeman has four. Five to go in the half. Inside Sidbury, and she did walk. Almost got bailed out by Elmore. Thought that's what the whistle was for. 3.5 to play, and the Tigers, one final shot. And Amanda Butler almost sent both Harrison Robinson in. Instead, Valentine will heave to beat the buzzer. And our first half comes to an end. Tigers led by as many as 13. Give the ball. I might point out that Clemson's leading scorer, Moy Robinson, with 17, almost 18 points a game, only has two, limited by foul trouble. Whitehorn driving right past the defender, Andrea Daly. 15-point game for Ruby Whitehorn to get the scoring going in the second half. Smooth. Ruby is such a smooth. She just glides in there. Todd across the lane. Kramer defends. Sidbury inside. Strong move with Elmore right there. Sidbury always is, seems to always be where the ball comes off the rim. She's a very good player. Clemson led by as many as 13 points in the opening half of play. Had a flurry of early lead changes. Eagles had built an early advantage of five. They get the takeaway. Ivy, Todd, Harris, and it'll stay in the Boston College end. Day Harris, scrappy player, seems to always be around the action. Good job getting between her, the ball and the basket. 22 on the shot clock. Inbound comes to Daly. Little step through right around Harris, who hit the deck. Harris lost her balance there, fell backward and left the opening for Daly. Back to a two-point deficit for Boston College. Noted earlier, they've won 13 of the 20 meetings and two straight here in Little John. Kramer shoveling. Harris wide open. Another three for the Tigers on the night. Give the assist to Kramer on the skip pass all the way across. Day Harris has six points, trying to save it. Sid Berry, Robinson for Clemson. Run the floor, Biggs. Run the floor, Biggs. Post. Harris going to back it out. Clemson put 73 points on the board against Wake. Had they been more efficient in the second half, as Robinson gets another bucket. Amanda Butler thinks it could have been a much bigger number. She really liked what she saw in the first half of Sunday's win. So obviously tonight she wants to see two really good efforts on either side of the intermission for her team. That rattles off no good on the long-range attempt by Todd. And out of bounds it goes. Eagles trying to score in the paint. Nice step through right there. Protected the ball, took it over the top away from the defender. Outscored the Tigers tonight in the paint by six. Ivy inside to Sidbury. Shot clock under 10. Ivy realizing that she'll pull up for a long range jumper. And the rebound by Michaela Elmore, and then a foul is called. Day Harris came into the ball game, second on the team at 36% on threes. We may have a double foul right here. 
It looked like Michaela Elmore showed some frustration on the back end of that whistle. All right. I think they're going to look I at I think they're going to look at the aftermath of that. Personal foul was called on Daly of BC for Andrea Daly, her third. And you could see the frustration on the end of the play by Clemson's Michaela Elmore. So, Cameron Inouye and Timothy Bryant. Common foul is under review. Contact after the common foul on the review. Take a look on the other side of this timeout, right back after this. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need told that it would only be the foul against Andrea Daly. McKella Elmore, they were looking to see after the fact, but she was just scrapping to the ball. I don't even think she realized the proximity of Daly to her elbow as she right. was just trying to gain possession for her team. I don't want to see her bring that ball down to her navel like that. I always tell my players to chin the basketball, get those elbows out. Don't sling them, but get those elbows out. You can protect it from behind with your back. You can protect it from each side with the elbow and protect it in front with your eyes. So Daly, the leading scorer on the BC team, now over on the bench with the three personal fouls on her team down by seven after they pulled within two. Robinson and the rejection by Sidbury. Another for her. She's getting close to 20 on the season. Eagles in transition. Ivy with Elmore knocking it away momentarily. And then Whitehorn coming away with the turnover forced. Ruby got those quick hands again. Got them in there. And you see the rejection by the six foot one inch Sidbury against the six footer, Amari Robinson. Good timing there by Sidbury. Elmore lob inside Robinson, and she'll go to the line. They don't run a whole lot of necessarily plays for Amari Robinson. She creates a lot, but that's one they'll often go with the high-low on. Exactly. And, uh, you know, she's, Amari's probably more fresh, or fresher, I guess, than anybody else on the, the court right now because she only played seven minutes in the first half. Early foul trouble. She had a couple of personals in the opening quarter. Now she goes to the line where she leads the Tigers. It was not a good first half on free throws for Clemson. Four of 11. Robinson. 82% this year, and you see the nice touch. There were only four of 11 in the first half because Amari wasn't shooting them. <laughs> her numbers, you look across her stat sheet, and she leads the team in just about every category. Two of two, and building her offensive resume on the night. Amari is sixth in the ACC in scoring, second in field goal percentage, second in free throws made. She's up there in the leaders of this league in every category almost. Elmore, offensive action for BC, and then comes down to the hands of Michaela Elmore, and then the foul is called. See, there she is again, bringing the ball down. You make yourself as small as the smallest player on the floor when you bring the ball down, Michaela. Mari Robinson, those free throws gave her six points on the night. And of course, numerous times this season, three in total, she's established new career highs. First with 29 against Tulsa, then 35 against Georgia State, then that 37-point effort against Syracuse back in mid-January. What a game it was. It was indeed. Uh, and we interviewed Amari after that game, and she was heartbroken. And uh, that, that just showed me she really cares. Tigers giving away a sizable lead in the fourth quarter, falling by one. Robinson from the corner. Now nine on the night for the Atlanta area native. That's, that could be so big for Clemson with Rudy, Ruby Whitehorn dr driving to the middle of the floor. And a rejection by Inyang. Tigers up by a dozen, looking to build. Whitehorn back to Kramer. Harris from the wing. Robinson coming away with it. Kramer thought about a three try and the defense right in front of her by Thompson. Tigers looking to reset. Could build their biggest lead of the game with the basket here. Robinson shot clock at five, tries to spin around the defender. Holding her ground though was Daly. Back on the floor with the three personal fouls. Sidbury in transition. Good rebound. In the rebound. Yep. BC, not known for its prowess on the board, still has a three-rebound advantage. They came in 
being out rebounded by about one a game. Harris crossing over, quick move on Sidbury. Gives it to Whitehorn. And a three second violation. When you, when you drive to the middle and pick the ball up in that lane, you better have something to do with it when you pick it up. Great recognition by Whitehorn. Had Robinson open in the corner. And Robinson best on the Clemson team at 38% beyond the arc. BC seeing Clemson go on a 10-0 run. Ending on the nice drive inside. I thought that might have been an extra step right there, but I guess not. Able to capitalize on the turnover. 10-point game. Maddie Ott's got to do a better job recognizing passing lanes. She passes the ball over the defender. Daly with that bucket for the Eagles. First and double figures, she has 10. And Tigers giving it up again. Thompson, she'll pull up. Too much touch, fight inside, but unable to convert on the putback was Wagner. Quickly ahead for Inyang and knocked away. Good recovery by the freshman, Ja'Kayla Thompson. Tigers will inbound. That's a really good find there by Mackenzie Elmore. Protect that basketball. Tigers have gone over to the bench as if a timeout was coming. When they went to the video review, I believe they considered that a media timeout. Got under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Cameron in away. Timothy Bryant, Linda Miles, our officiating crew tonight. I think uh, the BC coaching staff is begging for a review that it went off her leg, but I don't know that that's reviewable. At this point in the game, When Clemson acted, it appeared that they thought it was a timeout, so official timeout. So we'll go ahead and take one as well in a 10-point game here in Little John Coliseum. Clemson up on BC. How many times have I felt this good? Let me count for you. Sports fan tends to come to the gymnastics uh, meets, although you've got a lot of folks who will come to basketball games and also check out gymnastics and the other sports. And off the inbound for the Tigers, the steal. And Dontavia Wagner. Cardinals still just two of their last eight from the field, but they produce a 12-point deficit down to eight. Whitehorn and the Tigers enjoyed a four-point lead at the half. Pass on the wing off the hand of Matty Otting. Clemson giving it up again. Tigers and BC have matched turnovers, 16 apiece. This has four turnovers in the last two and a half minutes. Underneath, Sidbury double teamed. And a nice deflection out to Kramer for the Tigers getting the ball back. That's a good job by Maury Robinson and uh, Amani Freeman of not fouling there, going straight up. Going for the steal. Wagner, so good at that, nearly 70 coming in, second in the conference. It leads to a foul. Ari Robinson had it knocked away by the best in the ACC and Todd. Gonna get down and protect that basketball. Get down low with that dribble. Can't play basketball standing straight up. Tigers now with one team foul as Robinson. And the Tigers coming up with it and then giving it right away. Lozama the steal, got it ahead. Too far under Wagner, but the foul is called. Fourth foul on Amari Robinson. Amari Robinson picking up fouls number three and four in a hurry here in the third quarter. Crazy sequence. Lozama have gotten too far under, but Robinson with the contact yep. inside of the circle. Octavia Wagner. Third season with the Boston College program. Came to them from NC State. Come on, come on, 
native of Nashville, Tennessee, the Ensworth School. Led the team in points per game, rebounds per game, and steals per game a season ago. And pulls the Eagles back within seven. Not giving it to Kramer. And Amanda Butler will use a timeout. Tigers trying to get a second straight win in ACC play. We want our dog to fetch it. Drop it. And drop it. Drop it. It's a tragic number, if you will, for Amanda Butler's team. Clemson led 34-30 at the half, so they were on a pace to get to where they want to and keep the Eagles where they want to keep them, numbers-wise. Out of the timeout, Whitehorn. Now Matty Ott out high. Standing still again, needs some movement. There's a good cut to the basket by Elmore. Kramer left wing will hoist. Whitehorn offensive rebound. She can jump. Knocked away by Wagner. Amanda Butler in her pregame comments talking about being better on the offensive glass for her team while at the same time recognizing getting back on defense. And we've seen some examples of that so far this evening. Teams are even in offensive boards at six apiece. Now Clemson only has two second chance points. Amari Robinson usually wears that category out. There's Robinson back over on the bench with four fouls. She's been in foul trouble for a good part of the night. Shot clock under five. Kramer out high will fire it over Todd. Elmore gets the offensive rebound. We just talked about it. That's big. Recycling the possession. Tigers are 0 for their last four. They've given it up six times in the past four minutes. Shot clock under five. Whitehorn. Spinning. Daly defends. And it comes down to Andrea Daly. Trying to get BC a little bit closer. Long well, transition. Todd with the carry. That'll be turnover number 18 for BC. Frustrating night for both teams in the turnover realm. Yeah, if I were these coaches, I'd pull my hair out and I don't have any left, right? <laughs> well, you've moved your uh, hair region on your head area to your uh, to your beard and mustache. Very stylish look for you. Whitehorn underneath Freeman. They try to run that play usually for Robinson and Freeman doing a nice job to save it. And Elmore to Whitehorn. Battling inside, second effort. Went up over Todd. Good job, Ruby. 17-point game. Great second effort. You gotta love that. Tigers by nine, under a minute and a half to go in this third quarter. Ivy to Julie Prasave, who just checked in. Then underneath it goes, and a good finish down low. Tavia Wagner. Nice basket cut there out of the double high post. Three points for Wagner. Harris hung up out high. One minute to play in the third quarter. Harris had it knocked away by Ivy. Nine on the shot clock. Good movement without the ball by the Eagles team. Exactly. That's a play that works very effectively against that 2-3 zone. Tigers turn it over again. Being a legal screen on Michaela Elmore. She'll pick up her second personal. Let's see what happened. Yep, no doubt about it. She's leaning into it, first of all. She didn't get there in time, first of all. And then when she got there, she magnified it by leaning into it. Eagles try to get a little bit closer. Tigers led by a dozen earlier in the quarter. Bad pass. Whitehorn comes away with it. Two on one. Harris to her left. You can see the trailing defender, Daly. Thompson will keep. 40.5 remaining in the quarter. You see 26 on the shot clock. And Anjai back on the court. She'll give a breather to Deanna Todd. Kramer out high to Freeman. Whitehorn, 17 points in the game. More than 
quadrupled the effort that she scored when Clemson won by 10 at BC a year ago. Harris on the drive, scoops, and an offensive foul is called. Once again, Wagner in the middle of the action for BC on the defensive end of the court. That's a little out of control. That's a time when you need to be able to pull up before you get to the defender and shoots a little, I call it, kisser off the glass. First on Harris, fourth on the Clemson team in the third quarter. Your team has been foul prone here in the period other than Omari Robinson, who was two of Clemson's four and four in the game. Clemson just cannot shake this Boston College team. Eagles trailed by four coming into the quarter. Chance to get within at least five, maybe four, with 10 seconds remaining. From the corner, Lacey can't get it to go. Boston College struggling from beyond the arc. 0 for 7. Ott trying to beat the buzzer. And it'll be a seven-point lead heading to the fourth quarter for Maddie Ott and the Clemson. Honor of getting to know her, just what a person she yes. was. Yes. And, you know, you saw the graphic there where she scored the first points in NCAA tournament history. NCAA did not recognize women's basketball until 1981-82. Uh, and Barbara scored the first two points in the NCAA tournament because Clemson Penn State game started much earlier. And she scored the first two points on her way to 42 that night. Hey, a Sidbury making a move that was a signature Barbara Kennedy Dixon <laughs> effort. And she'll go to the line, drive at the three point play. And this will again make it a four point deficit for the Eagles. So, before the NCAA sponsored women's basketball, you had the AIAW. That organization eventually went away in 1982, is when the NCAA began with women's basketball. And as a result, a lot of the great stats that Barbara Kennedy Dixon put up at Clemson are not recognized by the NCAA. They're recognized so by the ACC. In Yang, strong move. Sidbury the foul. That's a good offensive possession by Clemson right there. You, you know, we talked about uh, Amari Robinson being in foul trouble, saddled with foul trouble, getting very few minutes. But Ruby Whitehorn has really put this team on its back in terms of scoring. She has played uh, 26 minutes, has 17 points, but in that 17, in that 26 minutes, she has not committed one of those turnovers that Clemson has. Good touch by Anna Winyang. Couple of free throws make it a 50 to 43 game. Mari Robinson remains on the bench with four personal fouls. BC trying to make a run. Got some flow going in the second quarter after they fell behind by 13. Todd, open look from the wing. BC team that came in 28% beyond the arc. Double dribble going to be the call on Daly who lost the handle. So far, the Eagles tonight after that miss, 0 of 8 on 3. So had they made just a couple, what a different kind of feel this game would have. Yep, she uh, dribbled and lost possession and then came back and dribbled again. Joanna Burnaby McNamee trying to improve to four and two against the Tigers in her sixth season guiding BC. I tell you, you can't be nonchalant against this BC team because they're scrappy. They are a very scrappy, aggressive team. And on previous Thursdays here in Little John with Louisville and NC State, they were as scrappy as you can get. I just seen that kind of effort tonight. Whitehorn, shot clock running down. Harris did not release it in time. Another turnover for Clemson. There was a time when everybody should have flattened out on the baseline right there and let Ruby do her thing. She's a very good one-on-one -on -one player. And... Uh, but everybody just stands around and watches. Got to have movement. Andrea Daly, leading scorer on the team, giving it away to Tiana Todd. And the ball knocked away. BC will keep with 12 on the shot clock. Tigers trying to step it up defensively. Good job, N O N Yang. Good footwork. Look at that. Perfect timing on the block. N O N Yang. And the night with 11 blocks. Tigers leader. 
Ivy trying to get it in. That was close to a five second count, wasn't it? Daly can't finish. Fight for the rebound. Foul against BC. Good job by uh, Mackenzie Kramer there, stepping in there, contested the shot. Good job contesting without fouling and then gets that rebound. Quick off her feet. Daly picks up her fourth personal. In the quarter, two on BC, one of the Tigers. Harris with some contact in the backcourt. That court should have been a foul, shouldn't it? Jay Harris. A couple of big scoring games for Pitt against BC a year ago. Cross court pass, Kramer. Good recovery defensively by Todd. Kramer fires and gets the roll. Took a victory lap. And it'll go down from downtown for Mackenzie Kramer. Big Double basket. figure scoring. Big basket right there, Pete. Ten points for the Lehigh transfer. Just like that. It looks like Eagles may creep as close as five points down. Tigers have a double figure advantage. Lacey hits the cutter. Todd pulls up. Nice touch. It's a good cut. Flash to the basketball. Show him your hands. Nice work. Eagles just one and seven on the road this year. That's Todd knocking it away from Day Harris. Day Harris scares me. Shot clock at 10. In a good way, Jim, or? Uh... <laughs> because she doesn't protect the basketball as she should. Well, she's going to drive to beat the shot clock, and she does. But she also excites me when she explodes by that defender like this. Give her eight in the game. Back out to a 10-point lead. Todd pulls up, left elbow. Another one left of the lane. Tiana Todd. She has 10. Sidbury leads the Eagles team with 11. No illegal screens, Amani. Robinson back on the court with four personal fouls, trying to back in on the very good defender, Wagner, and now it's taken away. Taya Sidbury. Second on their team with 45 steals at the start of the game, and Eagles claw back. They get a six-point game. When Todd reaches in like that, Harris needs to go to the basket like that. Fancy dribble and a nice finish. That burst of speed by Day Harris. Ten points for her. Third Tiger in double figures. Lacey can't get it to go. And it's deflected to Mackenzie Kramer. Continuous action here. You can see some wear and tear now on the players. Several of them gasping for air. Whitehorn, though, with a spurt. Getting a legal screen. If it's on Robinson, that'll be her fifth. And that's the case. So, Monty Robinson fouling out of this contest with 5.02 to go, and the Tigers up by eight. Let's look at that. Amani, I mean Amari. I thought she was there. I didn't see anything at all, but contact with Tiana Todd. My boat don't can lead the feet. So Robinson fouling out. Ruby Eight. Whitehorn leads the Tigers with 17 points. Eight point lead when Amari fouls out. Now let's see how that affects the rest of the game with 5.02 to go. So once again, an opportunity to creep a little bit closer for BC. They'll buy as many as 13 points earlier in this game. On the wing, Todd. Inside Sidbury. Good on the block. Elmore got a hand on it. Last touch by the Eagles as Wagner couldn't keep it in play. Tigers in Boston College, we talked at the start of this game what an even matchup it is. Yeah, the Tigers have an eight-point lead, but teams have been swapping points in various stretches tonight. Clemson up by eight. Fourth quarter, trying to get another winner. For just the second time this season, Amari Robinson fouls out of the game. For just the third time, she is held in single digits in points. 
Yeah, Amari, I, I think, uh, I'm going to take another look at this, but I think Amari Robinson sets a good legal screen right here. I always taught my players to cross their hands in front of them just like that. And as long as they don't extend those arms outside the framework of their body and there's nothing there, that should have been a no call. Tiana Todd is who she made contact with. Full court pressure for the Eagles. Ott gets it to Whitehorn who clears. Good job so handling the ball against the pressure. 5.02 mark of the fourth quarter is when Robinson fouled out. Clemson's leading scorer. Whitehorn has been the leading point getter tonight. Ott trying to add on to the advantage. And the try for the rebound leads to a foul. And it's going to go against BC. You know, this is a this is an opportunity for the Michaela Elmores and the Amani Freemans and the Eno Yangs and Mackenzie Kramers to step up when their leaders on the bench in foul trouble. This is an opportunity for them to show themselves. Taya Sidberry just picked up her third personal. Kramer, quick catch and shoot. Whitehorn skies for another offensive rebound. They get really it out good, of there. Really good rebound in traffic by uh, Ruby. Who's been effective on the glass tonight. Leads the Tigers with 17 points. Kramer and Clemson with the eight point advantage, maybe trying to work some clock. Shot clock at five. Kramer on the wing. Ott drives by Ivy and pulls up. Whitehorn inside, took it off the floor. Look what I found. 19 for the Tigers sophomore from the Motor City. Lead back out to 10. Todd to Ivy who thought about it. Andrea Daly on the wing. Ivy will hoist a three. No, but underneath Sidberry off the rim and on her way back up, she's fouled. Sidberry, really good all around player for this Eagles team. Ruby Whitehorn has been likewise for the Tigers tonight. Other night she had 14 points and nine boards against Wake Forest. So far this evening, 19 points and six rebounds. You see though, possession, bounced inside. Wagner had a rekindle on the feed from Daly. Back to an eight point deficit for Don Tavia Wagner and the BC Eagles. Whitehorn on the wing, had the open look. I think she wishes she had taken it. Uh, I think Coach might wish she didn't, I don't know. <laughs> Kramer underneath, Freeman, and one. That was a really good pass by Ruby Whitehorn with some zip on it. I used to say it had some mustard on it. But an even better catch by Monty Freeman in the finish. Whitehorn on the assist. Freeman has six on the night. Trying to make it a three-point play. 74% in limited trips this season on the free throw line. Another one of those players you mentioned with Amari Robinson out down the stretch here for Monty Freeman as Whitehorn gets another offensive rebound. Good opportunity to show that she can be a factor in crunch time and game. Tigers get the ball back with under three to play, up by 10. Trying to get their first win in a while here in Little John against the Eagles. Harris stepping back. Freeman, offensive rebound. Whitehorn had it knocked away. <laughs> Eventually Elmore forcing it. Who's gonna hang on to it? It touches Elmore out of bounds. Boy, that was a crazy sequence. Just about every player who was around the lane touched the ball at one point. Yeah, about six or eight of them. Eagles get it back down by 10, just under 2.30 to go. Boston College team, which has had some issues tonight on offense, going 0 for 10 beyond the arc, but they've not been a good three-point shooting team. And with fouls, three and three key players with four each. Lacey scooping it under Freeman. What a nice play that way. She was one of the, the four who had accumulated four fouls as they went down the floor. Off the bench, though, she's given them a boost. Half a dozen, and now taken away. Lacey feeding her teammate. And the finish underneath. Wagner now with a dozen. 
And just like that, BC back within six. Sometimes you can become a little too passive in trying to protect a lead. Contact and Ivy, a look of disbelief. She's called for the foul as she bumped into Elmore. And now a discussion among two of our officials tonight, Cameron Inouye and Linda Miles. Double foul. And it's going to be a double foul. It'll be the 15th foul on the Eagles. And the fourth in the Tigers. As Ivy and Michaela Elmore made contact. You got to play smart when it gets here. Michaela Elmore, that is not good. First on Ivy. And for Michaela Elmore, she adds to her total on the night. Tigers, though, with the ball. Coming up on 1.30 to go in regulation. Shot clock at five. Harris and a travel. 25 turnovers in the game for Clemson. Eagles get it back in a two-possession game. Remember, Boston College came into the night at the bottom of the ACC at 28% beyond the arc, and that's among the worst in the nation. But tonight, continuing that trend, 0 for 10 on three-pointers. You know, this might be a three-possession game, Pete, with their inability to shoot the three. Yeah, it's a good point. And Joanna Burnaby McNamee did not like how that was sizing up. So with 14 on the shot clock and 116 to go in the fourth quarter, she's going to call timeout. And she spoke candidly before the game about this is a team that will play up to its competition, will go through lags at times, will not show that aggression to make some plays. The way they play defense tonight, they've had a big hand in Clemson's 25 turnovers. They've come up with 14 steals. They end the ball game averaging over 12. They've shown an aggressive nature, especially on the defensive end, but offensively it's been a very frustrating year for a coach who's seen her team average about 73 points a game, but is accustomed to her team scoring more. Right, and they did that. And for Amanda Butler, she can tell you all about frustrations in a lot of categories. She's experienced some tonight, but for the most part, Tigers have been in the lead in this game, going up by as many as 13 at one stage, now trying to close the deal up by six here with just over a minute to play. Off the inbound, Ivy lobbing underneath. Catch by Daly and knocked away. Taken away by Day Harris. Big really, defensive play. Really good hands there by Day Harris. And that's got to be intentional, I would think. In any case, it's the fifth on Lacey. JoJo Lacey, the senior, will foul out. So one player on each side has been disqualified. I don't so know what Linda Miles is about to say is, of course, you get the minute when a player fouls out. They're going to look at it, I think, to see if that was intentional. The last play is under review. So they want to see if that was a grab or perhaps JoJo Lacey simply got her hand caught in the jersey, and that's why she stretched it toward her. And let's take another look ourselves. It's a pretty aggressive foul for sure. That, uh, that's a, about <laughs> as grab uh, as you can get. Jay Harris would tell you it was a grab. She got pulled back toward the backcourt. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see Lacey, knowing she had four fouls, kind of looked over, did a double take at her head coach, Should I realizing that not? she would foul out. Yeah. Foul comes with 104 to play. Uh, Tigers as a team, 73% from the line. Of course, they enjoyed a significant fourth quarter lead up at Syracuse a couple of weeks back, only to lose a heartbreaker. And no doubt wanted to show poise down the stretch. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, sometimes at this point, the leadership has to take charge. I mean, Day Harris and Mackenzie Kramer are both veterans, been in this league, been playing this, this game for a long time at this level. They got to take care of the basketball. They know they're going to get pressured. They know they're going to get trapped. Uh, and at Syracuse, that fourth quarter, Syracuse ratcheted up the pressure man-to-man. We're going to man. upgrade to an intentional foul. As well it should. Kind of upgrade the Tigers will gladly accept. So that means free throws and the ball. So a chance to 
move up by eight and then get back to the line quickly because you would suppose BC will foul promptly on the inbound. Mackenzie Kramer. 20 of 20 from the free throw line this year. Perfect. I hope that on jinx her, Pete. You said the numbers. <laughs> Kramer from St. Michael, Minnesota, the Lehigh transfer. Came to Clemson with a decorated career in the Patriot League behind her. 40% on threes in her collegiate career. 36% this season, obviously playing against tougher competition than she had in the Patriot League. 21 of 21. As 21 of 21. Let's see if we can make it double deuce for double deuce. Front of the rim, rolled on in. When you're a good free throw shooter, the rim recognizes that. Exactly. Eight point game and the ball. Obviously, for the Eagles head coach, frustrating moment. And the Butler trying to close out this Tiger lead. Get another win at home. It'll be a ninth on the year. Kramer. Uh, at this point in the game, Pete, you always want your best free throw shooters in the game. Ivy defending Kramer. Harris. So BC doesn't go for the quick foul. I guess when you are one of the national leaders in steals, you think you can get them. And in this case, on a night when Clemson's turned it over now more than 25 times, you can catch a break there in the legal screen call. The illegal screen on it, N O N Yang. And she was moving. I agree with that call. Tigers 26 turnovers, BC is 21. So the Eagles with the ball back down by eight. The timeout is called. 43.2 to go. And Yang picking up a second personal foul. Yeah. Tigers getting ready to head back on the road. There's there's no excuse for making illegal screens. There really isn't. I mean, I'm just trying to stand make there and let the screen, let the drip ball handler use you. He's trying to win two of three on this three-game homestand. Robinson fouling out. That's been rare this season. In Yang now give her four personal fouls. And Elmore has four for Clemson. An aggressive game. And for all their troubles shooting beyond the arc, BC at 46% from the field. Kramer and the Tigers, 49%. Difference being they've gone 7 of 16 beyond the arc. The reason why they're up by eight. Off the inbound, Todd. BC's got to try to score in a hurry. It'll be a long one on the try by Ivy. Whitehorn the rebound. Foul is called. Rough, rough night on three-point tries for BC. 0 for 11 in their loss to NC State on Sunday. They were 42% beyond the arc. They were 35% in the loss against Louisville. We know how scrappy those teams are defensively. But again, as we told you, 28% as a team. And the Tigers defending well. And they've been solid defending teams three-point shots on the year right hats off to Ruby Whitehorn this may be her best complete game of the year uh, with 19 points two for two beyond the arc by the way which is exceptional for her she has eight rebounds and once again in 34 minutes has not committed a turnover I think that's that was big. that's her best game of the year in my eyes that I've seen her play. 17 rebounds in the past two ball games against Wake Forest and Boston College. And Whitehorn vital and again having to share a lot of the scoring load with Robinson in foul trouble pretty much since she picked up two quick personals in the opening quarter. Odd having a hard time getting it in just in time to Kramer. Tough player to foul. Now Harris and the whistle on the personal foul. Whitehorn had 20 points against Mississippi State earlier this year. So this is her second best scoring effort on the season. And the 
foul, leading us to yet another moment in which we get a stop in play because Daly just picked up her fifth for BC, second eagle to foul out. Joining Lacey. I would venture to say this is the best floor game that Ruby has played in, in terms of zero turnovers in that many minutes now. It's interesting, Ruby Whitehorn with Day Harris just here after transferring for Pitt as a grad student. Ruby Whitehorn could run the point for this Clemson team if they really needed her to. She could. It'd be really interesting to see her as a point guard because of the ability to score so quickly off the dribble. Harris continues another solid night scoring-wise. That gives her 11. We told you she had a couple of 13-point games for Pitt against Boston College last season. And Joanna Burnaby, McNamee, the head coach of the Eagles, who's seen Harris obviously for a while, says, watching her on film, after the last couple of years, her career kind of lulled with the Panthers. She says she's all the way back to what she was as a freshman and sophomore with Pittsburgh. Tigers lead by 10. Eagles, uh, another desperate heave for three. Another miss from long range. Whitehorn the rebound. Simply dribble in the front court. And the Tigers going to try to wind down. And I don't know if Boston College is going to foul or not. Doesn't look like it. And Clemson will make it back-to-back -back ACC wins. They were able to get back in the win column and end a skid on Sunday. Triumph over Wake Forest then. And tonight, Clemson, a 65-55 win over the Boston College Eagles. They won up in New England a year ago. Tonight, they 